Gastrointestinal bleeding or GI bleeding is when any part of the gastrointestinal tract starts bleeding. The gastrointestinal tract includes esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine or colon, rectum and anus. GI bleeding is divided into two types, upper GI bleeding and lower GI bleeding. If bleeding occurs in the esophagus, stomach and initial part of the small intestine or duodenum, it is considered as upper GI bleeding. Bleeding in the lower small intestine, colon, rectum and anus is called lower GI bleeding. Approximately 80 to 100 cases per 100,000 persons suffer from GI bleeding every year. Bleeding from the upper GI tract is four times more common than lower GI. The symptoms, causes, and risk factor of upper GI bleeding is different from the lower type. The hospitalization rate of the upper GI bleeding is estimated to be six times more than lower GI bleeding. The most common cause of upper GI bleeding include gastric or duodenal ulcers, esophageal varices or enlarged veins in esophagus, gastritis, portal hypertensive gastropathy, Mallory syndrome, that is a condition which the inner lining of esophagus tears, and cancers. The most common causes of lower GI bleeding include diverticulosis, means when a small pouches form through the weak parts in the colon wall, angiodysplasia, along with diverticulosis is incriminated as the cause of lower GI bleeding in 4-7% of patients with GI bleeding. Angiodysplasia is a malformation of the blood vessel in the gastrointestinal tract wall. Hemorrhoids means when the veins around anus or veins in the lower rectum become inflamed and swollen. Anal fissure, polyps, cancers, and inflammatory bowel disease. The symptom of GI bleeding depend on the location of the bleed and the rate of bleeding. Hematemesis means red blood or cafe ground vomiting that suggests upper GI bleeding. Obvious red bloody emesis suggests moderate to severe ongoing bleeding, but cafe ground emesis suggests more limited bleeding. Melina means black or teary stool. Hematochesia or red blood in the stool is usually due to lower GI bleeding. Patients who have occult bleeding might have symptoms like lightheadedness, feeling weakness, paleness, abdominal pain, chest pain, and shortness of breath. If the bleeding starts suddenly or progresses rapidly, patients could go into shock. The signs and symptoms of the shock are rapid pulse or pulse more than 100 per minute, oliguria or anuria, means a small amount of urine or lack of urination, drop in blood pressure, and unconsciousness. In this situation, patient must transfer to the emergency department as soon as possible. Some patients are at the high risk of GI bleeding. Here are some of the important risk factors. Chronic vomiting, previous history of GI bleeding. Up to 60% of patients with a history of GI bleeding are bleeding from the same lesion. Some medications like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin, ibuprofen, and methanamic acid. Anticoagulants and antiplatelet agents like clopidogrel increase the risk of GI bleeding. Patients who have had gastrointestinal surgery, portal hypertensive gastropathy in patients with history of liver disease or alcohol abuse. There are different methods to diagnose if a patient has GI bleeding. The doctor needs to take a detailed history and conduct a physical exam and order proper tests. Common tests for diagnosing GI bleeding include stool exam because analyzing the stool might help determine the cause of bleeding. Blood tests include a complete blood count, liver tests, coagulation panel, and serum chemistries. Nasogastric lavage in patients with suspected acute upper GI bleeding require nasogastric to placement. This might help determine the source of bleed. Nasogastric tube lavage used when it is unclear if the patient has ongoing blood loss and it is prior to early endoscopy. Upper endoscopy is done by inserting a long thin tube through the mouth to examine the upper gastrointestinal tract. Colonoscopy is another method. This procedure is used to examine the large intestine by inserting a long thin tube with a tiny camera on the end of it into the rectum.
If the source of bleeding cannot be found with non-invasive tests, the surgery might be needed to explore all of the small intestine. How to prevent GI bleeding? The chance of getting GI bleeding getting lower by considering some tips. First is not to take dangerous medication for gastrointestinal mucosa, like NSAIDs and anticoagulants. Second is to treat stomach ulcers or gastroesophageal reflux disease if patient had them, quit smoking, avoid alcohol consumption, and take beta blocker medication in patients who have cirrhosis.